Well, hello again, my friends. Welcome to a Friday night with Carpo. Friday evening, around 6 p.m. You know, this video was actually going to be aimed at my uh, Carpo's Complaints channel, which I had created specifically for griping about problems, because I don't want to contaminate my main channel with controversial strife and gripes, but I do have complaints to make. Unfortunately, a week after I changed that channel to Carpo's Complaints, I got a copyright or a, well, a strike against my channel, and now I can't upload to that channel anymore for a couple weeks or whatever it is. Coincidentally, or maybe not coincidentally, ironically, what you wouldn't expect, you would think it would be one of the videos I talked about current medical procedures or the pandemic, but in fact it was actually an old video about Kratom. It was a video that I'd put on both my channels and that YouTube had decided was dangerous content. All it talked about was an actual government agency's health and human services quotes and discussions about Kratom. It's strange the things that YouTube decides are dangerous content, and when I make a video like this, I'm bound to probably get the same treatment. But, I digress, I chose to talk about it, so here I am. And I'm going to talk about Omicron and the pandemic. My reasons for talking about these things are multifaceted, but first of all, because I'm affected by this situation that's been going on for two years, just like the rest of you are. But number two, part of me says I don't want to talk about things just because they're hot topics. I want to talk about them when they affect me. And people who have been complaining about all the different lockdowns and all the different uh, uh, mandates that we've had, I agree with them, you know, that it's a problem, but it hasn't affected me as much. The first few months, I was in agreement with whatever we had to do to mitigate the dangers of a virus that we didn't know much about. No matter who says, way back at the beginning I knew this was bogus, or way back in the beginning I knew this wasn't a big deal, I don't buy into that. Nobody knew anything in the beginning. So, most of us were willing to compromise, follow lockdown procedures for a little while, and uh, a lot of people lost their jobs, a lot of people lost their livelihoods, a lot of people had their businesses shut down, and gradually we started to see, pretty quickly, that, uh, you know, two weeks had turned into two months and then two years, and we decided it's time to get back to normal. And a lot of folks decided that they didn't want to get back to normal, that they had carried on that fear from earlier in the pandemic. And I will clarify what I mean here. Omicron... Many of you might remember the Omicron song that I wrote a month ago or so. It was Omicron as a lover or something, you know. Where, when are you going to come to this country and come into my life? It wasn't meant as a joke. It was actually meant as a literal way to describe how I feel. That my hope was that Omicron, as a less dangerous and way more contagious strain, would just pass through the whole planet, infect everyone it could, and get us past this crap to get us back to normal. Now I know that many people will disagree with this. If you watch it, 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 probably any media, mainstream especially, they're talking about how people who think like that are selfish and we're not going to be able to just get herd immunity. Why not? Why not? A majority of people have already been infected. We've found that the shots don't work against Omicron. There's a lot of confusion and false narratives on both sides surrounding both the dangers of shots and the dangers of the virus. Can we just start over? Can we all just take a break here and look at things rationally? I got a phone call from my kid's school last week to inform me that he had been exposed to someone who had tested positive in his school. So he had to take a week out of school. Sure, just go home and use your Chromebook and log in and do some work from home. It doesn't work that way with nine-year-old kids. They don't just switch modes like that and say, okay, I'm working from home for a while. The thing is, when I went into the school, I, I wasn't the most pleasant. I made it visible that I was frustrated, but I said, what's the point? You know that if he was exposed, everyone was exposed, right? And the teachers kind of nod, and the principal nods, they shake their head. They're like, we know, but we're just following the rules. Everyone I've talked to feels like this whole thing is just stupid. But they're following it because they say, well, that's the rules. I have not talked to any people, hardly at all, who are actually that scared to where they think that uh, 
you know, kids should be sent home for a week if they don't even test positive. It's ridiculous. Let me give you an example of how, you know, and I'm sure a lot of folks will think that I'm the asshole here. I went into the store earlier today, uh, Fred Meyer. Um, I stopped wearing a mask in the stores about a month ago. Uh, well, actually, it was about two weeks ago completely. I, I wouldn't wear them in the evening, but if I was in a crowded area, I would wear them out of respect for others. And finally, I got to this point where I said, everybody I know has already been infected. And those who haven't and haven't got the shot will probably, if they are infected, be showing symptoms. So know how to stay away from other people and do what they need to stay home and protect themselves. We're all adults here. If a person is really that afraid of catching a virus, they shouldn't worry about whether or not I am wearing a mask if they are vaccinated and they are wearing a mask, if they believe in the benefits of those, those tools. It was somewhere around Christmas time when one of the top dog health officials was asked, I believe on CNN, uh, it kind of went around, made the rounds, but they were asked uh, about masks and, you know, will masks help us during the holidays? And she made it very clear. She said, research has shown that masks are no more than face decorations. That was her quote, not mine, face decorations. And since then, I've heard this from several other sources, including the CDC, including Health and Human Services and all these different agencies, which make it very clear that a cloth mask or a standard mask does nothing, basically nothing with an aerosol virus. And people will continue to dispute that. I think what we need to look at is, common sense here. Yes, I still believe that a mask will stop you from literally spitting into someone else's mouth, and that could be a benefit. But that is not as common when you're out doing something by yourself or shopping alone. The aerosol is aerosol. I have a beard. If I wear a mask, it's not going to do any good. Even a sealed mask, even an N95. Nothing funnier than seeing a mask on a dude with a huge beard, and, and somebody pointed out, he's got a friend at work, that it looks like he's wearing a G-string. I <laughs> just funniest thing. But uh, I'm not opposed to masks. I'm just opposed to everyone thinking that you have to wear it everywhere you go. Because it's social conditioning. I don't know how folks can't see this right now that they have been come so used to it. Some enjoy it. I, I've seen kids who say, oh, I just like wearing it. It makes me more comfortable. Some may think this is a benefit, but hiding your face is never a benefit. When I was young, when I was in high school, and junior high, I had the worst case of acne you would ever believe. And most of it was centered around here. Yeah, if I would have had a mask, I probably would have been wearing it too. To hide my face. To hide my feelings. Or who I was. And not be seen with my zits. Everybody has their own reasons. Maybe it's their teeth. But that's beside the point. None of that matters as far as mandating people to wear them. So, I went into Fred Meyer today, and there were probably... I would say at least 50, 60 shoppers. I don't know how many people. I can't count a store full of people. There were a lot of people there. And uh, I was the only one in the entire store not wearing a mask. And I kind of felt like a jerk. But I also felt like a pariah. And I thought, oh, how dare I compare myself to the guy in Tiananmen Square standing in front of a tank. You think of all the other people around there who wanted to do that, but just didn't have the balls to do it. I'm not talking about that kind of bravery, but rather in the sense that everyone around me probably felt like doing the same thing, or at least a lot of them. I want to believe that a lot of people wanted to take it off, but that they chose not to because they didn't want to be that guy. Now, I've always been willing to be that guy. <laughs> I have no problem causing problems if that's... If, if me causing problems is just my freedom, to do what I choose, then that's just a side effect of freedom. And this brings me to fear of freedom. I heard someone say this earlier today, and uh, it kind of stuck with me, and I wanted to share it. He said, Americans are scared of freedom. And I kind of laughed at first and thought, yeah, well, actually, that's pretty much true. And once he explained it in full, and I got the whole gist of where he was coming from, it's that Americans don't want to think for themselves. They, many of us do, many of us do, but at least half of America really wants to be told what to do. I'm just throwing that number out my ass. I have no idea how many Americans, but 
let's just say that if you look at the prison complex and you look at the police state type mentality that we have compared to other places, other countries, you start to realize pretty quickly that we like tight control in order to have our, quote, freedom. It's the age of the Karen, right? Where people will call the manager or call the police on someone because they're doing something they don't like. A person speaking too loudly or doing something that they don't enjoy hearing or seeing, so they'll call the authorities. This is pure laziness on society's part, but what it is is it allows people to not have to take initiative for their own problems. It allows them to put that off on someone else, whether it be government. The same thing with frivolous lawsuits. And lawsuits, people continuously suing each other over the stupidest things. You said something bad about me, you know. Freedom seems to come with stipulations. But I think what's happened in America, at least, is that people have lost direction. It's not like the past where if you stood up for a purpose or you stood up for what was right, that you actually had a clear goal in mind. And I think this is why things tend to be falling apart, why people are afraid to speak up, because they don't know what the hell to speak up on. Because the issues have become so complex, and we are so confused about the facts. Even thinking, you know, <laughs> we have to stand up tall for what is right, right? I mean, that's just what we do. We, we stand for our values and our morals. I found a lot of people don't. A lot of people are complete cowards. They're afraid to stand up against those that they might feel that they offend, or those that might offend them, or they're afraid to speak up to authority. They're afraid to speak up to their parents, to their kids, to their friends, to their bosses, to the whole world is just a bunch of cowards, and then people start living that way. Oh well, don't make waves, don't make waves. I saw a video this morning, it was Morals Are Subjective, basically, is what it was about, and uh, it really kind of summed up a lot of the feelings I've had over the years, but haven't been able to properly articulate or formulate in a way that I can convey it to people. But if I find the link, I'll post it. But morals extre are extremely subjective, and you can take basically anything that we think is good or bad, and you can find a time where it matters or doesn't matter, whether it's murder, whether it's you know, um, stealing, are you stealing to feed your family? Or are you murdering to protect somebody else or to protect your family? It's very subjective, but living in a time like today, we don't really know what's right. And today, people think that, for example, if you're not wearing a mask in the store, you're some kind of a right-wing moron Trump supporter. That's just the mentality a lot of people have. They really think that everyone can be fit into a box and that you know, life is that simple, black and white. What I'm seeing around me right now, back to come to back to Omicron full circle here, is that we have now a strain that everyone's going to get. My son just got sick for the second time. All of his friends got it. My family all got sick. We just, we recovered from it. Everybody I know, all my friends group, basically everyone, except one of my friends, uh, I think two of my friends that didn't get it, but everyone else I know, including extended family, everybody got sick. It was just a cold, something that we've dealt with for years. And all of a sudden, now the media can blow this out of proportion and say, look at Omicron, look how dangerous this is. But if you look at the news in other countries, or in other areas, or... In South Africa, where this strain was originally discovered, you find out that it's not as dangerous as we think it was, or as people think it is here. Even in South Africa, the top doctors were saying, this is great, it's time for celebration. If you see the interviews with them and you watch them, they'll say, we don't know why America is freaking out. But a lot of us do, because you got to keep the story going. The media, once Trump was out of office, they had nothing to talk about. And they moved right on and continued on with COVID. And now, instead of sitting here and coming out and saying, well, folks, this might be tough, but we're going to get over it. This is good. Good news. Omicron can, will infect us all and it will build up a good, you know, natural immunity. Nobody's talking about that. Nobody cares. Now my kid has to sit at home for a week, even though he's already probably had it. Even though they won't test him ahead of time, 
even though they won't give antibody tests to people and give them an exemption from a vaccine because they have an antibody test. Why not? Even in some of the most hardcore countries, a lot of them actually have that as an option. Natural immunity in the scientific community is actually considered superior to vaccination. And this is a well-known phenomenon. I mean, if you get sick with the actual virus, you're going to be exposed to more aspects, more spike proteins, and more different components of the virus than if you take the vaccine. But nobody's talking about that. Nobody cares. The fact that the kids have to sit at home when kids aren't even a target for the virus, when kids aren't even falling ill, when the only kids who have even had an issue are the ones who are extremely obese or overweight, and that now they come out and they're trying to correlate diabetes with Omicron or with catching COVID. Look, it's been two years. We've all had time to listen to what the experts say and to the time to research what the other experts say and to derive a conclusion somewhere in the middle. But what I've found is nobody cares. They want to dig in their heels. People just say every doctor who disagrees with the mainstream narrative is a quack. And that's complete bullshit. It's a lie. It's not true. Many doctors who are speaking up and who say it should be a personal choice, they're just disavowed, disbarred, they lose their jobs, they lose their career, they get cancelled, if you will. This is real. This is really happening. This isn't some conspiracy. Well, you might call it a conspiracy, sure, but not in the traditional sense of... When people say it's a conspiracy, they usually mean, oh, it's something that you believe is true that isn't. There are many real conspiracies out there. The testing center, two blocks from my house, one block from my house, my wife said it was just packed the other day. The parking lot was just packed full. And my son said, well, when I went by, it was actually not just packed, but cars lined up all the way out to the main highway, waiting to get a test. And then I saw an article yesterday about people who were getting their test results while they were standing in line for their appointment. No shit. There was a main, one of the main testing facilities in the U.S. They shut down all these different operations. I believe the one in Miami. Why is it always Florida? <laughs> that they, uh, they said some, some people were getting their test results while they were still standing in the line to be tested. They were totally bullshitting. These guys are making millions of dollars off of this testing. And because of the testing and the high rate of testing, there's more tests being reported. Because there's more tests being reported, the media can report on more positive cases. Because the media reports on more positive cases, naturally there's going to be a big hubbub about, oh my god, it's the highest cases we've ever had. And you see these charts and you think, oh no, we're doomed. But step back for a minute. What's happened in your personal life? Have you lost any loved ones? Perhaps. How many? How many people in your friend group have been strongly offended by this, or affected by this, as opposed to those who have been affected by the different measures that are taken to protect a few vulnerable people? Heartless as it may be, true freedom means that we have the ability not just to choose what we want to do, but choose what we don't want to do. And if we have an immune issue, if we feel compromised, if we are extremely obese and we don't want to catch COVID, we can find alternative methods to get our food or to, to stay home or not go to crowded places to force healthy young adults and children to stay away from each other for two years is bullshit and in retrospect we'll look back on it as a complete failure we have an aerosolized virus it's not the same as any other pandemic even in 1918 we had mask mandates it's true but that was from the flu but the reason why, and this is a point I wanted to make, a major important point, back in 1918 when we had the flu pandemic, 150 to 100 million people died worldwide. We lost a lot of people. And the reason why people were paranoid was not because of what they saw in the media, because they didn't have TV. The reason why people were worried is because they were watching their neighbors and their friends die in front of them. And so far with COVID... I haven't seen much of that in my own neighborhood or my own friend or family group. So therefore, it should be very dependent on region. I live in Washington State. We've dealt with it well. 
we don't have as many issues as some places do. So, I guess that's about it. I just wanted to touch on that. I wanted to get my thoughts on COVID out. Yes, I know a lot of people will uh, have told me in the past, well, you know, I'm glad you finally agree. I saw this in the beginning. And as I said earlier in the video, uh, anybody who pretends like they knew what was happening back at the beginning, even if they were right, it's like gambling. It's taking a guess. We don't know how dangerous this was, but it quickly revealed itself to not be as dangerous as claimed. And so far, we have not gone back and changed the way that we're doing things. And when my governor posted something on Twitter the other day, I saw it, it said something like, we've just passed 10,000 deaths from COVID-19 in this state over the last two years. So I quickly Googled up how many people died in 2019 in the state. 60,000, meaning the average people in a year is 60,000. So 120,000 people died. That means 8.3% of the people who died over the last two years died from COVID. Still, the highest leading cause of death is heart disease. You know, um, if there ever was a time to take advantage of people, it would be right now. And unfortunately, people have bought right into it. It's, I've never, I always known that fear was a great tactic to pull people in, to get them divided against one another. I really didn't realize how deep it ran. And I guess I should have, because as a human being, I should know other human beings. No fear. No fear. You know, it's just not worth it. Any anxiety about a virus is just not worth it. Look, if we had smallpox or something heavy out here, like, e like some aerosolized Ebola version, yeah, you better believe it. We wouldn't need mandates for something like that. You know why? Because people would see what's happening right next to them. Because people use their experience with other people, with family, with distant friends, to really determine what's going on. And when you tell people something is an extreme danger to them, and they don't see it, they're not going to buy into it. It's like when you tell people a storm's coming, right? Some people will run for shelter, some people will evacuate, some people will just stay put and say, I don't care. And then when the storm passes, and it wasn't as bad as they said... The people who stayed will say, Ha, I told you so. It's never that bad. But then sometimes that one storm comes where even the diehards who stick around say, Wow, I should not have stayed. And that's why people were being cautious at the beginning of the virus in case it was that one storm. But it wasn't. And two years later, we know that. So, God damn it, get my kids back in school. Teachers and shit stop whining. They just shut down the schools out here because the bus driver... They said it was a bus driver shortage. But it's more than that. With only two-thirds of people with shots and one-third of people refusing to get the shot, then when it comes down to just adults, two out of five people say they don't want to get vaccinated. And those two out of five people are employed across a broad spectrum. And is it really worth it? Is it really worth it to not have enough healthcare workers because some of them choose their own health care and what they want for their own health care? <sighs> this topic could go on forever, but I won't, won't go there because I've already spent too long on it. I just wanted to get this out, and these are all my own opinions. I'm not telling others what they should or shouldn't do, and if YouTube leaves this up, then they leave it up, but... Uh, yeah, this thing's gotten pretty ridiculous at this point, and anyone who's not just living their life as normal is really missing out, because two years is a long time, and uh, who knows how much longer you got, so <laughs> don't worry about the what-ifs. Just do what you gotta do, and stand up for what you think is right. Peace out.